find Ducky using only your sniffer. No getting distracted by green food. I have hide it. Come and find me. Now remember, Spike, listen to the sniffer. <laughs> Snipping Spike. At least Mr. Threehorn isn't green food. Huh. I'm not any kind of food. Uh, right. And I'd never eat you, even if you were. Oh, kids. Don't worry, Spike. You just have to keep trying. I am still hiding. Yes, yes, yes. I know you can do it, Spike. Come and find me, Spike. Remember, Spike, listen only to the sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> you finded me, Spike. Yup, yup, yup. Way to go, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's gathering tree stars with Grandpa. This will be Chomper's very first time of great giving. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. So, what's it all about? Well, many bright circles ago, everyone in the Great Valley learned an important lesson about caring for one another. And now we celebrate being able to share with each other and not having to worry about sharp teeth. Yeah, I guess sharp teeth can be a problem sometimes. Yes, they're horrible, vicious creatures. Uh, I'm gonna go find a little foot. Uh, oh, but I, I didn't mean him. Chomper? Oh my. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Up here, Chomper. We're finding the very best tree stars for the time of Great Giving Feast. Wanna help? Nah. Us sharp teeth can't tell the good tree stars from the bad ones. 
<laughs> when I was a hatchling, sharp teeth kept us from eating the tree stars. <sighs> we had to eat swamp sticks. Ew. Chomper, come on! You don't want to miss the feast, do you? I guess not. <laughs> mm, nothing but green food. Chomper, sit with me. <gasps> <laughs> Come along, children. It's not safe to play with sharp teeth. Maybe I should go back to the mysterious beyond, Ducky. Nobody wants me here. Oh, no, no, no! The mysterious beyond is not safe, Chomper. It is full of bad sharp teeth, like Red Claw. Yeah, I know, but I'm a sharp tooth. Yes, but you are a nice sharp tooth. And you are our friend. You even teach us things you know. Like today, you teach Spike how to use his sniffer to find me. Yeah, I guess. You are a very good teacher, Chomper. You are, you are. Say. If I can teach Spike how to use his sniffer, maybe I can teach Sharp Teeth how to be nice! Oh, I do not think... Thanks for the great idea, Ducky! You're really smart! I am? <laughs> oh, thank you, Spike! Once I teach Sharp Teeth how to be friends, the mysterious beyond will be as nice as the Great Valley. Has anyone seen Chomper? I've looked everywhere I can see, and I can't see him anywhere. He left the Great Giving early. He said something about teaching Sharp Teeth how to be friends. Sharp Teeth? Friends? Me no like sound of that. Me neither. We better find him fast. How are we gonna do that? We can sniff for him. Spike finded me with his sniffer, so he can find Chomper too. <laughs> hmm. I don't think Spike's able to sniff out anything he can't eat. Oh, but he can. Chomper taught him how. You can sniff him, Spike, I know. Your sniffer knows the way to go. Do it like you did before. And we will find him for sure. Go sniff him out. I do not have a doubt. You can sniff Chomper out. Your sniffer Chomper stood today. Okay, Spike, now sniff away. Look at that! He's got the scent. Show us where he went. Go sniff him out. You can sniff him out. Do not have a doubt. There can be no doubt. You can sniff Chomper out. Sniff and sniff him out. You can show us how. I thought I would have seen some sharp teeth by now. Oh well, 
I'll find some sharp teeth to teach tomorrow. <sighs> After a good night's sleep. Friends? Uh, right! Uh, you speak sharp tooth. Uh. Chomper went spike? Mm. Okay. Well, let's go. Teach Red Claw to be friendly. Breakfast? No, look! Spike find it footprints! Mm. Chomper! Hey, somebody my own age! This should be better! Hi there! Want to be friends? If we're friends, we can play catch. I'll throw and you catch. Oops, that's okay. You're just learning. <laughs> We bite our food, not our friends. <laughs> Ouch! Hey! Hey, wait! Teaching sharp teeth 
is harder than I thought. There sure are a lot of footprints, but we haven't seen any sharp teeth yet. Oh, that not funny. That great. Yeah, I'm sure Chomper's okay. wasn't such a good idea. Chomper, we were, we were. We looked everywhere we could see for you, but we couldn't see you. So we had to smell for you instead. You were right, Ducky. You are my friends, and those sharp teeth don't care about me at all. And I can't teach them anything. <gasps> I've heard that sound before. We gotta get out of here. Brown, move! What do we do now? Well, we can't stay here, that's for sure. Everybody jump! We've got to get down this mountain fast. Everybody, slide! Slide, Spike, slide! Me no slide, me fly! There's gotta be a better way to... Oh. I'd rather 
enough of this hard water to last me a lifetime. <sighs> well, at least we're all alive to enjoy our lifetimes. We better keep moving. Unless Chomper here can teach Red Claw and his pal some manners. Oh, no. I don't think I'm ready to teach Sharp Teeth how to get along. Or maybe they're not ready to be taught. Either way, I think we should head home. You left the time of great giving before we could give you your feast, Chomper. We found your favorite things because that's what you like. Wow! Thanks, everyone! Mr. Threehorn? Want me to help pull it out for you? Huh. You think those little arms would do a better job than my horn? Ha! Not likely. My arms aren't little. Threehorn said my arms are little. Hmm, maybe. But hands are handier than horns, if you ask me. Watch. Horns might be good for some things, but not for everything. Yeah! My turn! Ah. Looks like my dad's right. Your little arms aren't good for much, are they? Oh, yes, they are. Watch this. All 
sun. Come follow me. Yes, to climb and fast to roam. Oh, streams to follow. Shakes, but I'm sure your little arms couldn't start one. My arms aren't little. Come on, you guys. Let's make sure nobody's hurt. Earth shake not so bad. Only a few rocks and trees fall down. I am just glad the earth shake did not hurt anyone. I am, I am. Huh? Hey. Look at that! The watering place is full of, of nothing. No water here. Nope, nope, nope. No wonder the pond's empty. The fast water has dried up too. If you ask me, I think the earth shake made the water go away. The big pond going dry is bad for everyone. All right, please, please. Calm down, everyone. This is not as bad as the time all the water dried up. We still have other water besides the big pond. There may be hardships but we've overcome bigger challenges. Can I say something, Grandpa? Well, of course, Littlefoot. Everyone is welcome to speak here. First there was an earth shake, and then the big pond dried up. What if the earth shake made the water disappear? Oh. The water is gone now. What does it matter? Because if the earth shake did make the water go away, maybe we can do something to get it back again. Or maybe not. Someday, Littlefoot, you'll learn the difference between what you can change and what you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone seems to agree with you, Mr. Threehorn. So, for now, we'll just make the most of the water we still have. Spread the word. Don't take water for granted. And remember, it's important that we all work together. I still think we should do something. Like what? Well, we could follow where the fast water used to flow and see what could be done. How about it? I will go. Yup, yup, yup. <laughs> Me go too. I'll go with my arms that aren't little. The fast water had to come from somewhere, so we might as well see where that somewhere is. All right, let's go already. It is very strange to be here without the fast water. It is. It. Ah! Hey! Somebody help! <gasps> <laughs> and thank you for trying, Chomper. <laughs> so this is where our water went. All those rocks and trees are blocking the fast water. You think the earth shake shook down all those rocks and trees? Yep, and we'll need to clear them away to get the fast water flowing again. 
Well, that's easy. We can smash it down. I don't know, Sarah. We don't even know how deep the water is. Well, I am a swimmer. I can go under the water and look. Good idea, Ducky. But be careful. <laughs> Swimming thing that isn't ducky. Is that a. Is that a. Sharply teeth swimming sharp tooth? I can't tell. of Littlefoot is a mud brother of mine. So how did you get here from the big water, Mo? Mo see new land water and hoped it would lead to mud brothers. So Mo swam up it, and then Mo find you. <laughs> oh dear, the fast water must be backed up all the way to the big water. Walker friends need water. More help. See that big pile of stuff? It's blocking the fast water. Yeah, but once we smash it, whoosh, all the water will run down into the valley. Whoosh. Mo not like that. Mo's right. If all the water goes away at once, he'll be trapped in the Great Valley. So will other big water swimmers. Then what are we gonna do? We have to clear just enough stuff to get the water flowing slowly. Then Mo will have enough time to get back to the big water. Littlefoot smart. Those little arms of yours ready to work, Chomper? Yes, they are.
last rock. Spike, I'm gonna need some help. Don't you want my help? Chomper, I'm not so sure this job is for you. I know, I know, my arms are too little. Okay, come on, Chomper. We can do this together. <laughs> Littlefoot needs somebody strong, like me. Come on, we can do it! Chomper! <laughs> More help! Me too! Talk that way. Stay here and rest till you feel better. Something? Spike, this is no time for a drink. No! Spike wants us to look at something. <laughs> so there's water coming out of the log. So what? <laughs> I do, I do! Spike is saying the water dripping out of the log is coming from the other side. <laughs> oh, so we can use the log to make the water come out slowly. <laughs> Kyle say it's slow. The water's just trickling out. I think there's a rock inside the log that's blocking the water. Can you reach it, Ruby? Huh? The only way I'll know if I can is if I try. Uh, uh, uh. You can reach it, Ruby. Your arms are the biggest and longestest. Hey, Ruby! I see the rock that's blocking up the log. I see it too. Ugh, but my arms aren't long enough to reach it. But you could reach it from here. Uh, maybe I could reach it if I could reach in there, but that hole's too small for my big arm to fit. Well, my arm can fit. Uh, we better get off the barrier. 
It doesn't seem too stable. Hold on! I think I can reach it. Chomper. Guess those little arms are good for something after all. <laughs> good job, Chomper. Water go away. Mo must go. You're right, Mo. We have to go too. We're going to miss you. Oh, do not be sad, little foot. Remember, we had much fun today. Remembering, remembering is a kind of a helpful thing to hold on to a happy day so those glad thoughts won't go away. go home too. Come on. <laughs> Tonight is a night for celebration. The fast water has returned and we have these young ones to thank. <laughs> It was Chomper who really helped. Without his arms, we never would have gotten the job done. The young ones have set a fine example. It's a lesson we could all learn. <laughs> well, uh, it's like I always say. If you want things to get better, uh, you better get going. <laughs> Yourself? Oh no, me no see. Me Uncle Toronto, no leaf eater who met Flyer, who no other leaf eater who saw it. I thought we were telling scary stories. Oh, I know a scary story from the mysterious beyond. Hmm? I was told sharp teeth tell their kids this story to scare them. 
Something mysterious lurks in the darkest, dark caves of the mysterious beyond. Whoa. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Before time. Something mysterious lurks in the mysterious beyond. There, in those dark caves, lives a mysterious, spooky creature. They call him the Hidden Runner. Whoa. And? And then the Hidden Runner waits till it's night. Dark at night. When you're asleep, he sneaks up to your sleeping place, and before you wake up, he eats you! <gasps> So we watch for Hidden Runner? What'd he look like? That's the problem. No one's ever gotten a good look at him. No one? Why not? <sighs> because he's hidden. More than that, sometimes he's invisible. <gasps> What's invisible? It means he can't be seen. If he is invisible, how do you know he is there? Oh, you know. Right before he eats you, they say he lets out a noisy, horrible yell. Ow! Ow! Oh! If he's invisible, maybe he's here right now, but we not know. That's impossible. <gasps> Isn't it? Maybe not. Whenever you think you see something, but nothing's there, maybe whatever was there you didn't see was the hidden runner. That could be him right over your shoulder! Ah! Look back! <laughs> <laughs> well, just because you know see invisible runner not mean invisible runner not there. It's just a story, Petrie. Nothing to be scared of. Ah! Ah! Hidden runner? Little foot. Little foot. Sleeping time, little ones. Oh. <laughs> okay, Grandma. <sighs> no time for more scary stories tonight. Huh, like we were scared by that story. Um, Ruby, can I stay with you tonight? I'm not scared, but... <laughs> I am here alone. Yep, yep, yep. It is nice under the bright circle. Hmm, that is not what usually happens. No, no, no. Spike? Hmm? Hello? sleep stories. Not all of us. Hidden Runner did not come to visit your sleep story? How could he? Three horns don't have sleep stories. 
Remember, a sleep story about Hidden Runner only happens when you're asleep. And sleep stories can't hurt you in the first place. Maybe sleep stories not hurt you, but Hidden Runner might. Maybe you only see Hidden Runner in sleep stories, but me see Hidden Runner here with own eyes. But you can't see something that doesn't exist, even if it's invisible. Okay, Petrie, then what did this invisible runner look like? Like... like... nothing! Huh. Petrie, I know everything I know about Hidden Runner is a story. I know I even made parts of it up. Just because you make story up not mean story not true. <laughs> true. But you know who knows closer to everything than me? Mr. Thick knows. I bet he knows that nobody knows this is a true story. And now they're having scary sleep stories about Hidden Runner. No, me see Hidden Runner, for real. So please tell them the story about Hidden Runner is just a story. So. Hidden Runner is back, eh? Huh? Huh? Hmm? Hidden Runner back? <gasps> but he can't be back if he was never here, because he's imaginary. Oh, no. Hidden Runner's no story. He's not? He's been around for generations since I was a hatchling, even. You were a hatchling? He goes from place to place, but never stays long enough for anyone to get a good look at him. But sometimes, he comes back. Sometime now? Must be, but this time, this time I'm going to see him for myself. Last time, Hidden Runner was spotted at the dark caves on the hill. About a two-day walk. You're going to look for an imaginary creature? Correction. I'm going to look for an invisible creature. I might not get the chance again. When opportunity comes along, you have to take it. Have to go adventuring, adventuring, adventuring. I have to go adventuring while Hidden Runner's back. This is my opportunity to see a thing that's hard to see. It might not come again for me. I have to go. But is it true he cannot be seen? He's really real. like to see Hidden Runner with my own eyes. Which is the only way I can see it. Y you tell us Hidden Runner not real. But then, why were you so scared it did? Because me, me. Thing no have to be real to scare me. I want to see if there's really anything to be scared of. If you're going, I'm going. Why? You don't even believe any of it. But it sounds like such a nice, relaxing trip to the woods. You can all come if you like. Just ask your parents before we go. Now stay on the lookout for his footprints. They will be big. Oh, me afraid he say that. And far apart. And that too. 
Seeing Hidden Runner is probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. What if Hidden Runner eat us? Then it'll definitely be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> you hatchlings worry too much. There's nothing to be scared of in these woods. What about these woods? Just the kind of woods Hidden Runner likes. I once heard Hidden Runner scared away the tree stars themselves. Nobody ever saw for sure. I was just a little older than you kids. Did he just say the Hidden Runner scared away the tree stars? Like Sarah, and not have sleep stories. Being scared is for scaredy eggs. <laughs> Being scared is for scaredy eggs. But you are afraid, aren't you, Sarah? at were you having sleep no you woke me up is all <sighs> did you sleep okay Sarah you sure look tired so what if I'm tired? It's not like I was having scary sleep stories. Because three... Three horns don't, don't have sleep, sleep stories. stories. Well, we don't. <coughs> what was that? Hidden Runner, we're getting close. Follow 
me now through the trees. I think we're close. Must we be close? Don't get scared on me now. It's okay. Just try and be brave. I'm always brave. Hidden, hidden runner. Find clues, we know find hidden runner. I found something. <gasps> or maybe not. These branches have been bitten just the way hidden runner bites. And look, footprints. Let's go. Go inside. We won't find Hidden Runner if we don't look for him. It can't be that you're scared. Right, Sarah? Hmm. Me scared. Me wait outside. Okay, okay, me go. Now, where is he? Maybe he's nowhere, because there's no such thing as Hidden Runner. Ah! <laughs> hidden Runner. <laughs> what is that? It must be him. All my life, I've wanted to see him up close. And now, almost. <laughs> Runner, wait! <sighs> I missed him. No one's ever been that close to Hidden Runner. Then that is something, is it not? Hmm. Maybe we can still catch him. Mr. Thicknose, we have to find Sarah first. Uh, uh, <sighs> Sarah! Safe to come out. Hidden runner far away. We hope. Hmm. Where would Sarah go if she wanted to be somewhere that's not here? I was so close. I'm sorry, Mr. Thicknose. Sarah! Sarah! It's my fault you didn't get to see Hidden Runner. Now you know. I'm a big scaredy egg. I have scary sleep stories and everything. You could have just told us. Then we would have known. We're still your friends. But three horns are supposed to be brave. Being afraid doesn't mean you can't be brave, too. It doesn't? True bravery is to admit you're afraid and face your fear anyway, like your friends. Even after they admitted being afraid, they still came to find Hidden Runner. Then they're braver than I am. I just took one look at Hidden Runner's shadow and ran... <gasps> Whoa! He's really real! And I'm looking right at him. <gasps> I can't believe it! A story I made up wasn't a made-up story! Look at him. He has many different colors. I can't believe I almost let fear keep me from seeing this. Me not believe me not flying away. Uh, hi. I'm Sarah. <laughs> Disappeared. He 
doesn't disappear. He blends in. Look! He's still there. But his funny colored body acts as some sort of disguise. Hidden Runner not invisible? He only looked that way. Uh, maybe whoever first made up my story saw him disappear, but didn't understand how he disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for taking us to see Hidden Runner, Mr. Thicknose. I could never have imagined something like that. I thought I did imagine it. It did not look at all like what I imagined in my sleep story. No, no, no. I'm just glad we all got to see it. <laughs> and to think, the Hidden Runner was more scared of us than we were of it. <laughs> That's right. It's not anything you kids need to be scared of. <laughs> There's always something for Petrie to be scared of. No, that very true. <laughs> <laughs>